In this video, I want to talk about Logic Apps Preview. So Logic Apps Preview is a new Logic Apps capability and the benefit about this new preview version is that you can run Logic Apps now anywhere and everywhere. The possibility of this thing has been because of the Azure function runtime. So what Logic Apps use now is it uses the Azure function runtime to run the entire Logic Apps experience. And as you know, Logic Apps is an orchestration layer. Obviously, you can also have execution capabilities, but yeah, in, in technicalities or the specific purpose of this service is mostly around the orchestration capability, as well as it has all the different sort of connectors which you can leverage to build your entire orchestration and processing layer. So the reason why this new preview version has come in is because historically this used to be a regular logic apps and if you have gone to Azure portal you would have seen the similar sort of experience so you create a logic apps you have different workflows you create a new workflow and then you can add different steps in inside your workflow with different type of task and whatnot now this was all pretty good the only challenge was obviously when you talk about the version controlling or you talk about running all this if you don't have uh, uh, Azure portal experience if you don't have access to the Azure portal experience then yeah it was a bit of a head, uh, hassle obviously not even a hassle you couldn't do that if you don't have access to the Azure portal experience and so the code and everything was available but everything was in the portal experience itself and that was some like considered uh, bottleneck for some organizations so that is where logic apps preview came into the picture and what it does is it gives you to run this entire logic apps experience locally on your own machine using visual studio code so what i'll be doing today is i'll show you the resource so what i've done is i've just created a windows 10 virtual machine and i have a storage account and if i'll jump on the windows 10 virtual machine so that's my virtual machine and I have just installed Visual Studio Code on this and if I open Visual Studio Code at this stage if I get into what is installed as an extension there are no extensions installed so we'll quickly go through step by step how we can uh, basically set up Logic Apps preview on this machine and also we will quickly build a simple uh, HTTP uh, workflow using the Logic Apps uh, preview so the first thing is I'll install Logic Apps Preview on this. So that should be, yep. So if I stretch this, Logic Apps Preview. Yep, so that's the Logic Apps Preview. I'll quickly install that. A Couple of other extensions would also be required, so I'll, I'll install that in parallel as well. So C sharp extension. So I'll install that as well. Uh, okay, so that should be all good. And now if I come back into my extensions and if I clear this, I should see two extensions installed. So yep, yeah, I have an Azure account and I have Azure Logic Apps and C sharp installed. So the next thing which is required over here is we need to have function runtime because as I said, Logic Apps Preview uses function runtime. So I'll download that and install that as well. So it uh, should be pretty quick. And obviously we'll need, uh, because we will be building a simple HTTP base. So let's uh, install .NET Core as well. So let me quickly get .NET Core. three dot one installer okay so I have the installer and if I go back over here my function runtime is all downloaded I'll quickly run that so it should be installed in a tick yeah it's pretty quick and that's the installer I'll go back into dotnet core and I will basically install the SDK from this 3.1 uh, and that's my 64-bit Windows machine so that should get me the... yep so I think by now, okay, it's still uh, installing Azure Function and uh, 
yeah once the function is installed and uh, dot net core okay I have the dot net core as well so it's currently just scanning hopefully that should be quick so uh, I think yep so function runtime is uh, getting installed and I also have dot net core now so I'll install dot net core and uh, yep uh, so dot net core obviously it's uh, uh, it would be used for the sample which we are about to build now let's go into visual studio code back and if I see over here I have uh, Azure okay so what I can do is uh, I can basically click on this and if you look at the specific uh, component then it has a full walkthrough of creating your first logic app as well so let me that's finished and that should be my dotnet core yeah that's installing so what it is saying is uh, go to server and create a new project in the azure logic apps explorer and then select empty so it all works through the logic apps uh, explorer capability so let me go back over here and the first thing is uh, i'll go to azure and as you can see I have a logic apps preview explorer so what I can do is uh, firstly I'll sign in so that uh, my logic apps uh, uh, my visual studio code is connected to my Azure subscription yep and I'll sign in with a password and then it will ask me to use the authenticator app to authenticate this okay pin or smart yep I'll do it on the phone so I'll get a request I'm getting a request on my phone to validate my login from an authenticator app so I've got the request I'll just quickly validate that and now it should let me to log in so once this is done now if I go back to and .NET Core is also, also installed so that's all good I'll close this I'll go back to my so as you can see I have all the subscriptions what I'll say is I'll just create a new project and I can use any folder so first time it takes a while because it does set up a couple of things and uh, let's say I'll just use a C drive and I'll create a new folder okay local app I just select yep now it is asking whether I want to build a stateful workflow or stateless full workflow so what I'll do is May I'll basically select a stateless workflow because if even if you read the um, design it says stateful but here you can select either of these so let's say let's select the stateful workflow now you can see it says you must have dotnet core SDK installed and if I click on that it will take me to the SDK which I have already installed so what I need is I need to just shut down the visual studio code and restart it again hopefully it should be able to pick the dotnet core SDK SDK I already installed so if I come back over here and if I go in Azure so now I can basically create a new project hopefully that should uh, automatically uh, detect the dotnet core SDK otherwise we will create another one so I do select and I do stateful workflows and now it says yep yeah, that's fine uh, that's the name I am fine with that open in a current window yes I want to open the entire experience in current window and yeah that's it so I've got my logic app experience these are the artifacts that's the stateful workflow which I have and it says do you want to install the recommended extension for this repository yes I do I'll just install that will bring in a couple of different Azure function and extensions in so all that is pretty much baked in into um, the entire experience 
and it says your function project like yeah that's fine yes and obviously I would like to use C sharp that's why I installed .NET Core now if I go back to my workflow and if I click on that and if I say open in designer so what it'll do yeah it basically asks for that ports and stuff and if I allow yep uh, that's fine and it takes some couple of seconds but yeah uh, once this is uh, the designer will obviously the first time designer takes a while but yeah it should be and it is saying I you should connect this app to your Azure subscription so that uh, uh, particular accessibility and everything becomes much better so I'll basically connect it to my Azure subscription and now it's saying where do you want which your source group do you want to use so I'll say I want to use uh, logic apps local it should be local logic apps and now you can see I have a full um, logic app experience in my Visual Studio code the good part about this is I can what I can do is I can come over here and uh, I can build the entire workflow based on whatever specs I want so let's say I can say I can choose an item so firstly it needs a trigger so I'll say HTTP trigger and then I'll say what you need to do next is do a HTTP request so I'll say HTTP and I'll use that and uh, yeah I'll use the vanilla one so I'll just check in a couple of things so I'll put in a URL and then I'll also use a get request and uh, if I just open this URL it is nothing just an API endpoint so if I close all of this so as you can see it just rep responds this specific test text and uh, now since I have configured everything what I'll do is I'll just quickly go and say run start debugging and this will take a while because it will set up the first time uh, after this every time you execute it it will be pretty quick so that should be not too long once the setup and everything is all good I should get a URL over here but we will not use that URL we'll use a couple of other things so uh, yep so it says finished and hopefully yep debug anyways perfect yep function host is no longer running that's fine it gives that error sometime uh, that should not be a problem I see overview so overview is where you can see uh, the de debug mode of your application uh, it says workflow run, uh, run history could not be okay because uh, I think that's because that function runtime issue so let me save this and close this and open it again okay so now it's uh, open and let me also say just open the designer view and okay project is in folder yes yeah, start workflow okay I'll select the C sharp and it says yeah I need to start the workflow and everything and now I have the HTTP and that's my HTTP request and start the debugger I fail to verify the Azure web job oh, okay that's because I need to provide a storage account details so let me go back and I need to use a storage account details over here which is yeah if I put my storage account details and now if I run this hopefully everything should be fine so I'll just click run okay okay a couple of other things maybe uh, resource group is all good so okay now I've got the endpoint so if I click on this 
and I click on overview I should be seeing a yeah so that's my endpoint so if I come over here and try to use the HTTP request endpoint so I'll click with the chuck of the URL and if I open my flows uh, and refresh that you can see I have a workflow and if I click on the workflow if I click on this so I am I can see that there is my uh, message from the HTTP endpoint so yeah it's pretty much very straightforward and very simple to run a logic apps on a local machine